But that being said, it's a pretty dangerous tool. If somebody wants to give that a try. I'll try. Are you right-handed? Yeah. You can start it slow and then work your way up. It's kind of a sensitive trigger. Welcome to our New Orleans mini-series. Each of us has chosen one episode that specifically hits home for us to walk you through. First up is me, Fred, describing our volunteer day with Lower9.org. So Devin started off this day telling us that we needed to wear clothes that we could get dirty in, that we didn't mind potentially getting paint on. It is about 10.30 in the morning. We all were on time. We're on our way to a nonprofit, and I think it'll be, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I'm excited to do some, some volunteering. We will not be drinking. So that's all I know. That morning, she revealed to us that we were going to be doing some volunteer work with Lower Nine, which is an organization that is dedicated to rebuilding people's homes that are still being affected by the tragedy that was Hurricane Katrina. So we were staying in the warehouse district, which isn't too far from the French Quarter. So it's like city vibes, really fun. Where we were going was about a 20 minute drive away. We had to drive across a bridge and there was a stark difference between where we were staying and where the headquarters of the Lower Nine was. Before this day, the most that I knew about the Lower Ninth Ward was that it was the area that was hit the hardest by Hurricane Katrina. It suffered the most devastation. I mean, I think they had one of the largest amounts of people that had to relocate and move away. I didn't realize that things were still so terrible there today, in 2018. I want to introduce you to Laura. Hey, hey Laura. Hey, Laura. Hi, Laura. Hi. This is Ladylike. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? We drive up to this purple house, which is the Lower Nine headquarters. We meet three badass ladies. Just they welcome us on board immediately. We are automatically a part of the cause. Right, we're gonna spend a little while on a work site um, doing some residential construction, uh, which is all oh, the Lower yeah. work does. Awesome. I'm excited. Yeah. 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 Great. First yeah. thing we're gonna do is get you guys a t-shirt, so if you wanna come inside. Yeah. 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 By the way, purple, green, and gold are the official Mardi Gras colors of the city of New Orleans. Okay. This isn't just stuff we think looks good all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go get our free swag. Yeah. So so what was striking to me was that a vast majority of the people who permanently work with this organization didn't seek out to permanently be involved. They kind of hopped on a bus and volunteered and then ended up staying. They just never left. So that was the most exciting and striking thing to me was that these women were just so taken by the work once they got there that they couldn't see themselves leaving. So Julia took us on a tour. We got in the car and just sort of drove throughout the Lower Ninth Ward. So for us, the big issue in 2005, and there are people who don't even refer to it as Hurricane Katrina, they call it the federal flood. And what that means is that the federal flood protection systems, the levees that were built, failed catastrophically. What you're basically looking at is a body of water that was man-dredged with a wall that protects the neighborhood, in theory, from that body of water. But the wall is essentially just like an inverted concrete T. And you can tell just by looking at my hands, you know, if a bunch of water, a bunch of force hits one side or the other of that wall, it's gonna come down. Yeah. And what happened up here was that a quarter of a mile of that wall fell flat, was pushed flat by 25 feet of water. And the resulting flooding, which was basically like a tsunami or like a tidal wave, washed houses off their foundations completely for a good portion of the neighborhood. Laura informed us that a lot of people who lived in this neighborhood had lived there their entire lives and were just completely uprooted when this hurricane struck. There were no street lights. None of the land was being properly taken care of. And that's the kind of infrastructure failure that I'm talking about when I talk about Damn. getting out this way and sort of, you know, things not being as safe as they should be. She showed us different homes that still had flood lines. You see those sort of markings along the door frame of the house? It took a month for water to fully recede here. Wow. Okay. She showed us just vacant properties that hadn't been touched by the government. The grass was just super high. They weren't maintaining it. The fact of the matter is that this neighborhood is geographically separated by a body of water called the Inner Harbor Navigation canal and there are three bridges all three raise and lower so you can spend a good 15 or 20 minutes on one side or the other if you live in this neighborhood and you need a, a police car or you need an ambulance those services come from the other side so that's when you run into the effects of what I would refer to as environmental racism So once we finish the tour, we drive to the house that we are going to do some work on for the day. Hi! Good morning. Hi. Hey, I'm Devin. I'm Andrew. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. 
Uh, this is Freddie, Kristen, Chantel, and Jen. Hi. All right. Hi. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good. Good. I work for Lower9.org, and I've been working there for about a year and a half, rebuilding houses and doing renovations. We get folks from all over the place to work with us. We have a very small staff, so we rely heavily on volunteer labor. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. Today, we're working on a client's home here in the Lower Ninth Ward. She is a longtime Ninth Ward resident and we are gonna be repairing termite damage. This is the part of the house that we've already worked on. Andrew walks us through all the damage that the homeowner who's still living at this house is dealing with. So from here to here, this was all completely ripped off and gutted. So it's finally looking like a house again. So if you can imagine, she had half of her wall missing for you know a couple weeks. A little bit nerve wracking, sure. but uh, she's a trooper. And he's also teaching us about contractor fraud. And I had no clue what contractor fraud was or that this was a rampant issue that people were dealing with post Katrina. So the situation with her house, she bought a modular house right after the storm. It's kind of typical shoddy workmanship. The contractor fraud aspect was very prevalent down here after the storm. People took advantage of folks that were looking to get back into their house quickly. People decided to invest in modular homes, which is a smart idea in theory because it's like a little bit less expensive, they're built somewhere and then they're driven or shipped wherever your property was and plopped down. And the contractors would take large upfront payments and then do some of the work or do all the work with shoddy materials and then take off. And this is a concrete fill that was stacked on this foundation. They basically did that, come in with the truck, set the house down on that and then that's it. So part of the problem with that is the wood that was used in certain parts of the house, like the parts that we replaced, wasn't pressure treated. It wasn't the correct kind of wood mm -hmm. for the climate here. And that is what led to the wood getting wet and rotting, which is an open invitation for termites, termites. to come in. Here's some pieces of termite damaged wood. You can see here, you can break this apart with your hand, but not great for a structural uh, joist. Wow. Something growing in it? Oh my it, god. Yeah, it could be. When we took, when we demoed this part of the house, there were lizards falling out, there were millions of ants. Oh so my god. There's, yeah, there's creatures living in it. When he started walking us through the damage, he would tell us this thing, that thing, and I would say like, oh wow, like we have our work cut out for us. So this side was repaired as well. So we had this all opened up. And right here, there was a termite nest about the size of a basketball. Oh my god. But then he kept showing us more and more and more damage. And it just seemed like it didn't stop. I mean, there was so many things going on and I was like, wow, this is a lot of work. This is our access to the entire bottom of the house. So you can see the um, damaged insulation. When we got here, it was all sagging and it was very musty in here because that stuff was getting wet. Yeah. yeah. And so it's retaining water and that's gonna keep the wood wet and the termites really love that. So we're gonna be spending some time down there. Cool. You can see here, this bottom plate, which is also very structural, is completely gone. You can pull it apart with your hands. What we're gonna be working on is pulling these pieces out with some big crowbars. Okay, sounds like we should get started. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So we divvy up the teams. Devin and I are assigned to work underneath the house, and then Chantel, Kristen, and Jen work on the siding of the house. So Devin and I, we suit up, we put goggles on, and then we get underneath the house, and it is a sight to see down there. So what we're kinda gonna be doing is cutting away the stuff hanging down and then pulling out that insulation and putting it in a trash bag. So, there's some nasty stuff like this on the, mm -hmm. that looks like a hornet's nest or something. Oh my God. Um, there shouldn't be any hornets in here. Devin and I, we went to work. We cleared pretty much half the basement and we got all of that moldy, moist fiberglass and insulation out from the bottom of the house so that it could be replaced with proper insulation. It felt really good to get all that out of the house. It felt like we were just unclogging an eardrum. Just, just like, <clears throat> that was a huge job. There was a ton of it down there. There was so much debris. There were like seashells in there, trash, just like bugs things just flying all in our eyes. It was insanity. And hopefully we've made their jobs easier in terms of making sure that they get all the crap out so that they can redo everything properly. Devin and I could really see the progress as we kept going further and further under the house. But I think Chantel, Jen, and Kristen, they had a little bit of a harder time because it takes a lot of physical strength to get that siding off the house. Um, the trick with this is to find a good spot to start and kind of get it get it started while another person fits their pry bar in and get it a little further and further. 
So you get that sweet spot where it actually starts to come out. That takes a little bit of experimentation. Because of where the house was built, which was in Missouri, the type of wood that was used wasn't equipped for the heat, so it swole up. I think once they got into it, they were like, oh shit, like this is literally why it's taking so long to get this house into livable conditions because even though it was a botched job, it was still very difficult to get those planks off of the side of the house. And there were three of them and it was still very difficult. One, two, three. And he wants a little bit of a mallet. Oh, it's coming out. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I'm just doing it slowly because there's a lot of nails. Yeah. We said goodbye to the homeowner and we left. I think what was going through my head once we left the home and realized that there was still so much work to be done was just this overwhelming feeling of sadness that this older woman was taken advantage of at this level. I think I just kept imagining this homeowner as being a member of my family. She was really warm and she was in such good spirits and I think she was really happy to have Lower Nine helping her to get back on her feet. But it's been so long, it's 2018 and she's still not living in proper conditions and that's the part that hurts the most. She should be living in a home that's comfortable. She should be thriving at this point and she is still dealing with the devastation and she has people in and out of her home multiple times a week trying to right the wrongs that these contractors have done. I was happy that we got to help even a little bit. Okay, y'all, so I know what we did this morning was a little bit different from what we did last night. I'm interested to hear what y'all thought about the work that we did today. I think it was really cool that we were able to meet with Lower Nine and talk to them and see the work that they do to rebuild homes. Yeah, it was really special to kind of just be a part of the work that's being done there, even for just like a little bit. Yeah. These people work like all the time on this. And it was really special to kind of see like people who are really dedicated to rebuilding a neighborhood. It's interesting because you see a lot of homes homes that look a bit newer and you're like, oh, these homes have been rebuilt. But there's also another side to the story. With the homeowner that we dealt with, she dealt with a lot of contractor fraud, which was, you know, it looked as if it was rebuilt and done, yeah. but it wasn't done properly. And that sort of led to years and years of trying to fix a problem that she thought had been fixed from the beginning. So many parts of this story, it's like not only are they sad, they're just wrong. Yeah. yeah. You know, like the homeowner took what she thought was the fastest option to just get into some sort of structure that yeah. she could own again. The fact that it wasn't done properly, but she didn't even know about it, is now causing like years and years of grief. Mm -hmm. Like the type of damage on her home is the type of damage that you'd see on homes that are like ancient, right. you know, yeah. not like 10 years old. We all know that your house affects your mental state. Yes. Where you live and where, where you call home affects who you are. And so the fact that this community is being just like held back is just so disappointing. Which is so cool that the Lower9.org exists to help the community and to rebuild everyone's homes, you know? It's really awesome. So this was my first time being this up close and personal to natural disaster relief. And I just can't help but think about everything that happened with the 2017 hurricane season in Puerto Rico, and that's just the continental US. There are so many other natural disasters and devastations that have happened just around the world. It's hard for me to even form wrap-up thoughts because my mind is just so astounded with how devastating and sad it was. Um, I wish that we could do more. I wanna do more. I don't want this to end. Everyone, please go to lower9.org. Please donate if you can volunteer if you can, whatever you can do, even just spread the word, that would be amazing.